Hi everyone, my name is Elvis and this is Grey Money Matters. Today we continue our series of working capital management with this episode topic of managing inventory. In this episode, I will go through different options and strategies to manage inventory so you can apply this to your business. With that being said, let's get started. In managing working capital, an organization needs to determine the optimal amount of inventory to have on hand without risking loss of sales. While it may seem straightforward to hold a high amount of inventory to ensure that all sales demands can be met, there are costs involved. These include the cost of funds invested in inventory, warehousing costs, and the cost of deterioration or obsolescence. In manufacturing settings, there may be additional costs involved because such a strategy often hides inefficient work practices and poor quality control. Your business also needs to ensure that it has the right inventory on hand. Often, organizations find that due to poor planning, they have an excess of some items and stockouts of others. The total value of their investment in inventory may be right, but the allocation between each can be wrong if you do not get forecasting and planning right. Associated with the cost of holding inventories is the investment of working capital required to hold them. The higher the levels of inventory, the longer the cash conversion cycle and the greater the requirement for working capital in the form of lower cash reserves or higher borrowed funds. Further to this, the higher the borrowing levels, the higher the risk, and therefore the higher the interest costs to the business. By reducing the level of inventory, carrying costs and levels of working capital are reduced. However, this may lead to an organization needing to place orders for inventory more frequently along with the associated costs of ordering. So let's look at cost of inventory. The three costs that inventory management aims to minimize on aggregate are ordering costs, carrying costs, and stockout costs. So let's start with ordering costs. Ordering costs are incurred in ordering and receiving inventories. These include preparing and providing purchase requisitions and purchase orders, receiving goods into store, including inspecting them for quality and returning them when they do not meet specification, transporting goods into store. These are especially important if goods are imported, settling accounts. It is often difficult to estimate such costs because of the need to allocate common costs. At the very least, it is important to try and identify those costs that vary with the number of orders placed. By ordering larger quantities or having large production runs, fewer orders or production runs are required per time period, resulting in lower ordering or setup costs, but higher carrying costs for holding larger amounts of inventory. Conversely, by ordering smaller quantities or having smaller production runs, more frequent orders or production runs are required resulting in higher ordering or setup costs, but lower carrying costs because there are fewer units on hand. Let's now consider carrying costs. Carrying costs are the costs of holding inventory until they are sold or used. These include warehousing costs, and in warehousing costs, you will find sub costs, such as wages, rent, or rent foregone, light and power, heat, refrigeration, and other employment costs insurance, interest on borrowed funds invested in the purchase of inventory held, spoilage, deterioration, obsolescence, and theft. Some of these costs may be difficult to estimate, but as they can be common costs or opportunity costs. Thirdly, stockout costs. Stockout costs are incurred when organizations run out of stock of finished goods or when manufacturing operations are disrupted through shortage of raw materials or machinery breakdowns. These costs include loss of profit on lost sales, loss of sales on other items, profits foregone on possible future sales from customers who have been lost through stockouts, potentially higher manufacturing costs, and possible lost sales because of shortages of finished goods. The need to process rush orders. If urgent delivery to customers or receipt of goods need to be delivered to your warehouse and alternative modes of transport are required from your usual trucks, vans and ships if you deal with international trade to a more expensive option as express catered delivery and planes instead of ships for overseas transactions. An accumulation of back orders. So the question needs to be asked, what is the right level of inventory? In determining the optimal amount of inventory to have on hand or the right quantity of the right things, 
an organization needs to consider a number of factors. These include stockouts, the level of stock required to prevent running out of inventory, reorder point, the point where the organization reorders its inventory, lead time, the length of time it takes to receive inventory or get it into the condition ready for sale, the organization's ability to forecast demand accurately, fluctuations in the level of demand, seasonality, promotions, the visibility of current inventory levels, desired service levels on time or in full, quantity price discounts. If you order a particular amount of inventory that incurred a discount for ordering a large quantity, the shelf life of the product, the restocking policy, make to order or make to stock, and the seasonality of supply. And that's it. That's the end of this video. Thank you for sticking around to the end and make sure you continue by viewing the next video in this series on managing accounts receivable or accounts payable. Thank you and until next time.